Hello, my name is Scott Savetta, Director of Education for the COPD Foundation. This is lesson number nine in a series of tutorials for the mobile spirometry unit. In lesson number nine, we're going to discuss the use of the electronic peak flow meter. It's important to note that not all events that we host will be using the electronic peak flow meter as part of the protocol. Please check with the COPD Foundation staff member to find out if the electronic peak flow meter will be used at your event that you're participating in. So the electronic peak flow meter is a very simple device that's going to measure force expiratory volume in one second and peak expiratory flow. The only value of concern is going to be the peak expiratory flow. In our protocol, we have preset tables based on an individual's height, age, ethnicity, and gender category. Those individuals who have less than 70% peak flow will move on to the next station, which is spirometry screening. The reason why this is so important is it really is an effective and cost-effective tool to determine who needs to actually blow into a spirometer and who really has good lung health. This is a great way that we can focus our energy at these events and lung health awareness, raising awareness for COPD. And we only test the individuals who really need to have testing done with a spirometer. So it allows us to concentrate more and get more people through our booth to do awareness. So let's show you how this machine works. We're gonna press and hold the power button. And you're gonna see a very simple user interface. You're going to see a face with breath coming out, uh, telling you that this device is ready to blow. You're going to use the same maneuver you use for a spirometry test. However, this one only needs to blow for three seconds, not a full six seconds. And you only need to do a total of three maneuvers. And then you can get the best of those three. We're only going to be concerned with the peak expiratory flow. We're going to use external tables to determine if they need to move on to the next station or if testing is complete and they have normal lung function. You're going to insert the mouthpiece and instruct them to blast as hard and as fast as they can for three seconds. <gasps> the value comes up. Peak expiratory flow is 582 on the first blast. Do it again. Icon is ready. <gasps> Six hundred. Ready again. <gasps> Five thirty-three. So the best of those three maneuvers was six hundred. To make sure of that, you're going to press and hold the enter key in the middle, and it will tell you that um, test number one, which was the latest test you performed, was six hundred. You're going to use your external tables. which are based on NHANES three values, set as 70% predicted. So you're gonna look at the individual's height and age based on their race classification and gender. So this table is for male, Asian, Caucasian, Hispanic. On the back side is male, African, American. And then we have a set of tables for female, Asian, Caucasian, Hispanic, and African American. So, we're going to select this chart, male, Caucasian, 65 inches, and the age of 40. You're going to see the table is based on every five years. So you're going to round anything from 38 to 42 would be 40 and so forth. So two ages before or after that value is the value you'll want to use. So base at the age of 40, 65 inches. The predicted value at 70% is 382. Anything above a peak expiratory flow of 382 is normal. Mine was 600, normal. No further testing would be required. If somebody's peak flow is below 382, that would be an abnormal test and they would move on to the spirometry station. Once they move on to spirometry, you would perform the spirometry as demonstrated in the previous tutorials and record the data down on the, on the report card and then educate the patient about the results and about COPD and lung health. Thank you very much.